Hi everyone, Robotrons here from the Mastermind Fever team. We are very excited one more time to see you on this Monday and to share some great news about uh, something quite unusual actually, nothing to do with marketing strategies, nothing to do with um, coaching or training, something different but so related into what we are doing and the purpose that we place into our online business and other things that we can do as well for others. So uh, we are going to have a great presentation by Kerry Wilson and she's going to share with us a wonderful trip to Mexico. It was a mission trip to Mexico. Absolutely amazing, I'm sure. I didn't want to hear about what she had to say, so I'm just waiting right now for her to share the information with us. But before we carry on, I would like to explain to you very briefly what the Mastermind Fever Team is. Well, we are a group on Facebook and we help each other to have success online by having a mastermind partner. We are following the principles of Napoleon Hill and what we want to see is leaders being created and we have actually seen so many people being transformed by not only finding a mastermind partner but being assertive and also hosting their own hangouts with the Mastermind Fever team. So we are all encouraging you to come and join forces with us and to see how you can change your business in the next 30 to 90 days. So uh, you will be able to find us on Facebook under Mastermind Fever, Mastermind Fever team, Mastermind Fever group, and we will be more than happy to add you to the group. Um, so without any further ado, we are going to have Kerry Wilson, who came back from a trip in Mexico only a few days ago. Kerry, is it correct? Yes, uh, last actually a week today. A week today, and she's going to share some great information about what she did there and why she went there and what does it have to do with network marketing anyway. So Kerry, the floor is now yours, darling. Awesome, thanks guys. And, and yeah, I was away for 10 days and it was kind of a last, not necessarily a last minute thing, but thing, uh, pieces fell into place that allowed me to go at the last minute. Um, every year our church does a Mexico missions trip. And this trip is um, one that my son has been on prior. He went last year and since then his, I saw his life transform basically. He he started being called to missions work and he's actually heading off this June to New Zealand for seven months on a missions trip so he's very excited about that. Um, so this year he really wanted me and my husband to go with him and we had planned on going, four of us actually with my daughter included and we had planned on going and then all in one week we have three vehicles and all three vehicles broke down. <laughs> so we needed a new vehicle because we need to get from A to Z, A to B, A to any other letter of the alphabet. And so we had to purchase a car that left us in a position where, you know, we really want the kids to go, but my husband and I had to take a step back and, and choose not to go. And my husband's health hasn't really been 100% uh, since he had his kidney out, so he kind of was a blessing in disguise for him. Um, but things fell into place that they really, really needed drivers and they needed another member of a medic team. So I went down as the nurse and also as a driver. So therefore my trip was paid for, which was awesome. So that allowed me to go at the end. And I'm so glad I did because it is going to be the first of many missions trips for me because the 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 amazing lessons that you learn and I'll go through kind of how I was transformed during the trip during my PowerPoint presentation but how this relates to what we do why 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 bring this up during a Monday night webinar well you know we are in the business of changing lives regardless of whether we're trying to help people build businesses online um, become financially free to have those abilities money wise time wise to give back to the community and I think this was a huge experience for me in that 
I see now that it's so important to give back to the community, to give back to people who may not necessarily have uh, a choice in the way that they've... Oops, are you okay, Aurora? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. You, your picture came on, I wasn't sure why. Um, so anyway, in a nutshell, basically, this is kind of how my trip went and the lessons that I learned. And hopefully at the end, I'm going to instill that desire in you to give back to your community. You don't have to go to Mexico. You don't have to go anywhere far. There are needs with inside your community, locally, right where you are. So hopefully we can discuss that near the end and, and it... Uh, will spark some desire in you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and Aurora if you can just let me know when it comes up and if it comes up okay. And yeah we can see your screen. Perfect. Now I just want to make sure that is it a full screen? Um. Yes, it is. Perfect. And you see changing. I see getting there, yeah. Yep, yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. All right, so hearts transformed. Uh, it, these pictures will be later on in the slide, so I'm not going to explain any of those uh, pictures at all. Um, I named this hearts transformed because not only when we when we go there, are the hearts and the lives of those we've gone to help changed. A lot of times, and I would say probably the majority of the time, it's us that are going there to help whose hearts have transformed. And it is so true. <laughs> so I'll, uh, uh oh, I hear a little wee one. All right, so getting there, there was 150 people on this trip, and we went down in 12 vans, uh, so there was approximately, I don't know, an average of about 11 people per van, um, most of them youth, and then we had a cube van and a truck and trailer to pull our, our stuff behind us. So we went down in this huge convoy of these white 15 passenger vans and this is a picture. The poor guys who had to actually load up our luggage every single day, this is how they received our luggage. So there was 150 of us. If you can only imagine, this is only a few of ours in comparison to how many actual bags that went. And this is actually how we received our bags, which was very nice of them. They would put them in numbers uh, in order to be organized and to better um, prepare the border crossings, because we had to cross two borders. We drove down from Canada to Mexico, so we had to cross the, the American border plus the Mexican border. And everything had to be numbered and labeled so that if at the border, any one of us was to we have the right to say, um, you know, we want to search Carrie Wilson's stuff. Well, in order to do that effectively, they need to make sure that they have a, a very organized system. Oh, Aurora? Yeah, sorry, I'm here. I've got uh, Jesse who just woke up. Oh, I know, I heard him. Nice. Okay. Um, so anyway, this is kind of how we received our baggage, all in a nice row, and, and uh, uh, it was very, very good for them to do that. Uh, this was my van of kids that I was responsible for, and this is the beginning of our trip, and this is this what happens after hours in the van being bored. They start doing calisthenics and, and van aerobics and it got very, very fun and the kids very uh, bonded. Some of them knew each other, some of them didn't and we tried to make it in a way that kids were forced to make relationships with people that they wouldn't already know, if that makes any sense. Uh, so we really encouraged bonding between the kids. Uh, these guys spent, 
I think our traveling days were about 12 hours a day because wow. uh, we got to it was two out two full days and a couple of hours to get from Canada to Mexico so that's a lot of driving so that's a lot of time spent in an enclosed vehicle with that many people and it's amazing how relationships grow and and bonds are created in that amount of time so once we got to California we went to just where the border to Tijuana is and we had to wait outside the Amor. Amor is the or the uh, organization that we went down with, and they had to actually escort us across the border into Tijuana and guide us to our camp. And so this was in a parking lot waiting for them to be ready to take us over. So these are all of our vans and the kids all kind of goofing off, trying to let off steam after long days of driving. So you see you have groups of people playing games and kind of getting some energy out. This is my son showing off for the girls. Wow. <laughs> and Pretty strong. Yes, and then a couple other kids tried it and failed, so he was feeling pretty cocky after that. Mm -hmm. So these are all of our bands. You can see the kids on the roofs, and the music was blaring. Uh, people were playing frisbee and football and um, were playing cards. And some of them were being ready for days of with uh, days without a shower. Uh, this is Daylin. He's got quite long hair so the girls braided it so that he didn't have to worry about it getting all tangled and stuff. So so we had about three hours that we were stuck there waiting uh, before they were ready to take us over. Uh, the angel vans. In Mexico when they see our big huge convoy come through and uh, um, we draw pictures all over the vans, um, little messages and stuff like that, which I'll show you some pictures of. But the Mexicans refer to this, these vans as angel vans because they know that we've come to help them. So that's pretty powerful and it's quite impressive to actually see our convoy of vans rolling in and, and the people pointing and waving and they're so appreciative. So these are the kids kind of drawing some of the pictures on the sides of the van. Although I did, some of the pictures that I did, you couldn't really see what they were drawing. So, but this kind of gives you an idea. The kids had a blast using markers on these bands and being able to draw on them. <clears throat> Sorry, so I'm what sorry. were they drawing? Little messages they would do, um, like this one here, Jesus loves you. Um, a couple of them were writing Mexico missions trip 2014, um, building homes in Mexico, like little messages that would let people know who and who we were and why we were there. Okay. So it was pretty powerful to see all this graffiti on the vans, and and I'll, I'll show you something else in a later video here. So setting up camp, we are, I think we had about 45 tents, maybe close to 50 tents. There was approximately three to four girls and boys in each tent. So it was quite an interesting um, little camp. Really it was just a dirt uh, field and you set up, they had a little store where you could purchase, um, you know, soft drinks, snacks, they had Mexican blankets and all that kind of stuff set up in there. We used porta potties the whole time. Uh, they cooked suppers for us and we packed lunches daily to take to our work site. Um, so these are just some of the rows of tents. And I don't know if you can, can you see my mouse? Yes, I can. Okay, so Behind, this is our, our kitchen tent, and behind this is um, a fi big fire pit with some bleachers that we meet every single night for worship and, you know, just kind of to debrief on the day. But behind that, at the base of these mountains, was the U.S. border. So we're very, very, like we're right across in Tijuana. And all night long, you could hear helicopters patrolling the, the wall. 
there's a 30 foot wall um, that's built throughout the mountains that uh, the border patrols you know it's like those reality TV shows border crossing uh, if anybody's ever seen any of those it's just like that the helicopters patrol all night long and it's uh, quite noisy actually so we didn't get a whole lot of sleep but there's a huge amount of tents and this is kind of a, a guarded area this little blue house here is where the guards stand by um, because they want to keep us protected right so so that was kind of, it's a little false sense of security because the fences around the area are very um, easy to navigate over. But it kind of felt good knowing that we had some protection anyway. And last picture of some of our tents. And at one point, this camp actually housed between all the groups that they had, because our group is not the only group that they invite in, um, I think they had a hundred and no nine hundred and twenty campers in there at one point. So mm -hmm. all these different groups come, and it's a big L-shaped sand field basically. And you just come, you pitch up your tent for how many days that you've arranged, and, and you pack up and you leave. It's, it's crazy. So this is some pictures of the community that we were in and I really wish some of my other pictures uh, worked out because it is amazing how we feel like we have nothing. We live in this, oh, we live in a small house, we don't have this, we don't have that. Well, where we were, pieces of garbage become building supplies. And, and trash become toys for the kids. Like these people have almost nothing. And it's just sobering to go through and, and, to, and to see the, the devastation. Well, not the devastation because it's not, this is the way they live, right? But the despair that they live in. Um, these little boxes right here are the toilets. That's their outside toilets. But you can see how every little piece of scrap of anything becomes walls, pieces of roof. Um, I think my daughter was saying that one roof was a billboard of, I think it was Tommy Hilfiger billboard or something. That was, that was part of their roof. So anything becomes something to them. A uh, lot of tires become retaining walls. That seems to be the common theme there. These are the roads that they have to navigate through. So it's a very hilly where we were. So basically you have one row of house and then up above, and you can kind of see in this um, first picture here. So these are the houses all leveled up. So you have one row of houses and then way up you have the second row of houses, and way up you have the third row of houses. And the roads are not kept at all. Like you can see the ruts, you can see, and I'm going to show you a video here in a second, and it's going to really depict how uh, poor the roads are and these poor vehicles that they have to drive, um, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a vehicle anyway. But you can see the garbage laying around. And, but you know, the people are happy there, and that's one of the lessons that I learned, that it doesn't matter, you know, we're rich maybe in material things, but they're more rich in a family, community, being happy with what you have, and that's a huge lesson that any of us need to learn. And the, the views are beautiful, like the, the view of the mountains are so beautiful there. So this is a video that I want to show you, and this is, was one of the roads that we had taken to come in and out of our work site every single day. And these poor rented vehicles that we had, these rented vans, um, this, the van that you see here is, is the A van, we were in the B van, um, and it goes down to, I think, to M, uh, the M van. But yeah, these, these vehicles, I'm sure we give them back, and there's probably a lot of uh, repairs that need to be done to the shocks and all that kind of stuff when we're done. But when we were passing this, our church has been going here for 18 years, and 
so they know the community and stuff, some of the people that have been on the trip frequently. Um, I thought this was a garbage dump when we were passing by, and they said, no, this is not the dump. This is just where people just kind of come and dispose of things, and people have to walk by this stuff every single day. So this is just a video. And I know it's bumpy, but I, the roads are terrible. I, I couldn't stay still. And you can see all the satellite dishes on the roofs. At least they have satellite and a way to communicate a little bit. about you but I I think I wrote one of my uh, little comments on Facebook like my heart goes out to those people who have to walk by that every single day and it just blows me away that they can't come and at least clean up some of that stuff because the air I'm sure is toxic just walking past it mm. and that's one thing that really um, I kept on repeating over and over and over again during the, the time that we were there. We were only there five days, five and a half days, I think, in Tijuana. And I just couldn't wait to breathe fresh air. They burn their garbage there in their backyards or in the back alleys or, or anywhere. So um, so the, the smell is just constantly around you and it's, it's very, very hard. Uh, first day on the building site. So meeting the family. So this was the lady and one of her daughters that we were building our, the house for. And she actually got kind of a little bit of a surprise because she wasn't the family that we were supposed to build for. Um, there was nine builds going on. So we built nine houses in four days. Um, so each group had their own house and their own family that they were building for. But our family that was assigned to us ended up having chicken pox and we couldn't take our kids into a situation where they could possibly, you know, get the chicken pox. So we got to surprise this family that morning with the fact that we were building a house for them. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they were slated to have a house built the next month, um, sometime in late April, but they were very, very surprised when we showed up. And it's amazing. This was where we put the new house, this nice flat area. And, you know, every single morning we would come, she would be out there with a broom, sweeping the dirt as if it was her floor. And that just, that just shows you how much pride they have for what little they have. And Absolutely. yeah, it's just they she goes around, she picks up everything, she just wants to make sure, and you can almost sense the embarrassment in her and the fact that she wants to make sure like her kids were impeccably clean, uh, beautiful clothes, 
Um, we were later on told that usually on these house builds, they tend to dress in their best while we're there um, because they are very proud and, and they don't want to, I guess, they don't want to pull up, I don't even know what how to explain it, but but you know what I mean, like they, they, they're just very proud and they, yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Um, this was the kids. You could see some of these girls, they were awestruck. Like they were just totally baffled by the house that they're living in now. Um, the fact that anybody could live there. A lot of these kids, it's their first trip. So it was a very huge, huge eye opener for them. And this lady had a beautiful little garden, as beautiful as you can make it in Mexico, where the grow the earth doesn't really have much nutrients there. But, um, but yeah, she you could tell she was very, very proud of of her possessions. This was our toilet for the the four and a half days on the build site. Um, you go inside and there is a toilet in there. It has no lid or anything, but it is a toilet bowl. It doesn't flush. Um, so you have to put your you know, toilet, bathroom tissue and stuff inside a, a bag. And every single morning she cleans that bathroom so that we have a nice clean bathroom. Um, by the end of our four and a half days, it was getting pretty raunchy smelling. But you know what? At least she kept it clean and as clean as an outhouse can be. It was it was marvelous. <laughs> um, this was a little girl, uh, Carolina. She's not part of the family, but she actually spent every single day, all day with us on our site. And a lot of pictures of her are going to be coming up and how she loved to help and she loved to dance and she loved to... And we had no idea how to speak Spanish. And that's my journey or my um, hope this year is to actually learn Spanish so that next year when I go, I can communicate better with the families. But, uh, but it's amazing how much you can actually communicate without actually speaking the language. It's, it's amazing. And uh, she'll always, her little face will be burnt into my memory forever. She was such a cutie. And this was a couple of the other girls with her. And every single morning, even on our first day, I don't know how they know where we're building, uh, probably the supplies being delivered, they probably scope it out, but every single morning the vendors were on our build site waiting for us to buy their stuff. And of course we did, we bought something every single day from a lot of the vendors, but probably, um, I don't know, maybe six or seven different vendors uh, came around. And also there's vehicles with these loud speakers on them and I wish I would have taken a video of one of them because it's quite it's quite interesting that's their way of advertising it's like a mobile store so somebody will come along with these big water jugs in their back advertising uh, water and they're shouting it out from their loudspeakers another one will come by um, for ice cream or for it's almost like little mobile stores mm -hmm. You can, you can buy anything on the street. Uh, this was us giving the lady all of our names. Each one of us bought a bracelet from her. And so what we did was we gave her our names, and then she came back the next day with our names embroidered on the bracelets, which was, which was nice. So it's just a way, and things are cheap. Like, I mean, $2 for a bracelet to, like, uh, I bought a, a beautiful poncho, a Mexican poncho for $15. So it's a good way, for them, that's a lot. Like, that's a $15 American, which is a huge amount for them. So that small amount is, is helping give give them back, you know, to help them make a living. Uh, so the very first day on the work site, we had gravel um, delivered, and the gravel is used for the cement pad, which that was our first job, is to create this cement pad. But in order to do the mortar on the house, which you'll see in, in a little bit, we had to sift this whole pile of stuff by hand. And so you can see the sand falling down and the rock staying uh, in the net. So we would just toss it back because the, 
the mix as it is in the original pile is used for the cement pad, but the sand that we're sifting is for the stucco on the side of the house. So after doing this for about, I don't know, maybe an hour, one of the guys came by in these trucks, the Amora guys, and said, you know what, let me build you a little, uh, little thing that'll make this a lot easier. So he put the actual sifter in a frame so that all we had to do was throw the, the shovel. <laughs> <Play that. laughs> yeah. So that made our job so easy because you can imagine how hard of work that is, especially yeah. for kids who aren't used to that kind of work. It was hard. Like we would trade off every ten minutes we would need to trade off and and a couple of them shovel, a couple of them rake, a couple of them push the sand back so that the rest can fall. Um, this is Nathan doing his job there, and even little Carolina. She wasn't much help. She was actually more trouble than help because she kept on banging us with the shovel. But but you know what? It it was so important for her to get involved in, and the girls loved helping her and watching her work. Uh, this was. Uh, a good friend of my son's, Joe, he was setting the frame for the cement pad that was going to go down. And this was the final pro, final day. So we laid, I don't even know how many things of cement we mixed. Um, do I have a picture? These little bins right here is what we mix the cement in. So you can imagine, like that would only fill maybe this little corner right here. Right. So we probably filled, mixed, um, and it's all by hand, um, probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred and some of these little bins. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of work, but you know, the kids were so excited at the end of the day when it was finally done. And we were just hoping that their dog wouldn't walk across <laughs> and make little paw prints. Um, so that was the end of day one. Day two were the, was the walls. So as soon as we got there, we had all the measurements and everything. Uh, so all the kids got to work and started building the walls. There was four exterior walls and one interior wall because it's a two-room house. That's it. So the girls got lessons in sawing and cutting. So they were actually quite impressive once they got their skills up and they really ripped through those boards like crazy. And really I was one of the nurses and this time around there was very little um, injury which was very nice amongst all the people so that was really good. This is Carolina's sister so she had come by because she knew her sister was hanging with us so she actually became a daily uh, visitor as well on the whole site and she actually is learning English in school so she brought her workbook and we would help her learn English and she would help us uh, learn Spanish. And little Carolina, she is so cute, hey? She is beautiful. Oh, she is so sweet. And it's so sad because she was singing this song to us the whole time and we were like, you know, thinking it was yeah, a normal song kids would sing and our interpreter actually came to our site once and, and the kids wanted to know what she was singing and she was singing about how Satan was um, uh, cutting the land, the throat of a goat or something like it was a it was an eerie song that she was singing and she would repeat it over and over and over again so once we knew what she was actually singing, the girls would try to teach her something else and try to distract her when she was teach singing it. But it was just so sad, like, you know, this cute little thing talking about and having such terrible visions in their head, right? Mm. It's hard. So this was uh, the second wall going up. So it's starting to look like a house near the end of the day. This was our final wall that was being put up. And you can see part of the roof is, is getting uh, put on as well. So these, oops. Um, so once the walls are built, we have to add this chicken wire and tar paper because the chicken wire is what holds the stucco. So it was, uh, it was a long, tedious job because the chicken wire has to be stretched to a point where um, it's very, very tight. And that, it was hard work for when it was very, very hot. 
so day three was the roof in the stucco. So here they're putting the tar paper on the roof. Uh, the family is responsible for doing all the finishing on the roof. We just put the tar paper up and, uh, and that's it. Beautiful view though, hey? Like it's just, it, it, man, if that place was like well kept and stuff, it would be a, a great holiday place. Like it's beautiful there when you look past everything. So this is them mixing the, the mortar for the sides of the walls. <laughs> you can see Chantel, she's so exhausted. She was sick at the beginning of our trip. She was starting to feel better that day. But, you know, she was a trooper and she really pushed through. We had lots of colds and lots of flu bugs going on. So everything, like I said, was made by hand or, or mixed by hand. Uh, this, I think we mixed probably about 30 containers of the stucco so it wasn't as bad as the cement but it was it was still hard work and this is Carolina's sister doing some work it was so impressive to see how hard these girls worked and how they enjoyed it like they loved helping us which was really good this was the one daughter of the family that we were building for so and this is her sister at the back so you know they can always say that we helped build the house, which is is going to uh, go a long way with them. So this is the final wall being stuccoed, uh, the first coat. We had the second coat to do the next day. And this little girl right here, when we put in the windows of the house, she kept on um, asking me to come near, like to come to the window and she would tell me something and I, I couldn't quite get what she was getting at. And this one, one of our girls here spoke a little bit of Spanish. So she went and asked, you know, tell me what you're saying basically. And she was so happy that she had a window that she can look outside of her house. Because, yeah, like, and I'll show you the before pictures, like their, their old house. There was no windows at all. Um, so she was just so amazed. And the fact that the window opened was even better for her. Like the little things that make people happy. Like it just, it's humbling, it really is. Uh, the boys in the hood, <laughs> these guys were hilarious they came around the second last day and they were drawn of course by all the hot little girls that were on our site <laughs> so as you can see none of them are paying attention to me they're all waving at the girls on the site well we came down and we started chatting with them and they saw that we had writing on our van and they showed me a permanent marker a sharpie so again, we don't speak the same language, but I got what they were asking. They were asking if we could, if they could draw on our van with a permanent marker. <laughs> so of course we're like, ah, uh, no, you can't. But here's our markers. So go for it. So we gave them our washable markers, and they went to work and put a little bit of graffiti on our um, on our van. We were worried at first because we weren't sure what exactly they were going to write. Um, and even when they wrote this, of course we knew Mexico, but we didn't know what Hoysho, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but Hoysho N, uh, it actually says made in Mexico. And you'll see this uh, now after the fact, when I looked on my poncho to look at the washing ingredient or the washing instructions for my blankets and poncho, uh, it has this symbol on it. So they were actually writing on our van uh, saying that made in Mexico and then they put all their names on it which was awesome so we were very very worried what they were gonna write on our van but we wanted to let them do it just to see what they would what they would write and that wasn't enough they had to actually tattoo our, our people so they came and they graffitied all over our guys uh, made in Canada so it was, mm -hmm. it was quite fun. So to impress the girls, of course, uh, they loved, this guy loved this girl, Mackenzie. The, he just was like enamored with her and she couldn't get rid of him. Uh, kind of started <laughs> freaking her out actually because he was like, really, like he wanted her Facebook and like, oh, marry me now. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, but anyway, in the end, they 
did some work for us, which was very, very good. Uh, it's good for them, uh, you know, being able to help in the community when it wasn't even their house, and yet they were willing to help uh, stucco it and stuff, which was pretty amazing. But it was also good for us because it, they, they did this whole back wall by themselves, which was awesome. And the final day on the building site, so the final coat of stucco is uh, going up. Uh, these were our juice. Uh, we had two waters and one Gatorade that we could mix up so that we could stay hydrated because uh, after doing so much work, and it wasn't that hot. We had maybe one hot day, but other than that, it was not hot. You could easily wear jackets and, and still be comfortable working, um, but you do dehydrate very quickly because the, the air is different and you're, of course, working, um, working hard. And we put this extra pad because eventually they are going to take out this wall of their existing home and attach it to this one so that it would be a bigger house. Because I'll show you in the next, I think it's on the next slide, um, the size of the house that they have right now and there's four people living in it. So again, mixing mortar. And this was our final, this is Aaron, he was our build lead, and he's excellent at stuccoing, so he was teaching the kids how to get this really nice smooth finish, so that uh, it finishes it very, very nicely. And Joe in the window. And this is what they live in now. So this is their house right now. So in this little section right here is their kitchen. And it's probably, I, I would be surprised if it was six feet by three feet, maybe, six by four, maybe. If that, that's probably even a stretch if you look at the size of the door. Mm -hmm. So inside was a little stove, um, a little counter. Right here, this little bin is where they do all their washing, so washing their clothes, washing their dishes, all that kind of stuff. This big bin here is, is water, and they do have serviced water uh, because the husband actually works at a Samsung uh, parts manufacturing company. So he, in relativity, makes a fair amount of money, which I think in total they make about 360 a month. So that's what they live on. Um, so they do have service water and they do have satellite. Um, so they do have some amenities that others may not. They have power. So, um, but in this little section here, which is probably double maybe of what this is, that's their living area. So there's two beds set up, one for the two girls, one for the husband and wife, and a dresser. And that's... What that's did you say, Kerry? What was that? Whereabouts? The rooms? Um, so right here. On the side, right. Yeah, yeah. So this little front part is their kitchen. This back stretch here, which is probably double of what this is, length yeah. um, That's their living area. So two beds and a dresser. And that's all their possessions. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. And then, of course, this is our finished house that we made for them, which isn't a whole lot bigger when you put it all together. Maybe is one corner. Whoops. So probably it would be this, this little corner would be filled in, basically, and it's the same size. So, but it doesn't leak. It doesn't give in to the wind. It has windows where they can air out their house. Um, I think I have pictures of the inside. So I'm taking the picture here from the other corner. So you, that kind of gives you an idea of how big it is inside. So it's not much bigger than what they have already. But it, like I said, it's leak proof. It, it's against, it's going to protect them against the elements. And eventually they'll be able to build onto their existing home. And this was us being, um, or on the final day, taking the last picture. And uh, just, uh, I can't even 
I was a mess this day. You, know, you could see my face was so puffy from crying. I was bawling all day long, knowing that this was the last day. And it's amazing how strong of a bond grows when you don't speak the language. You are only there for four days. The first day, basically, you have no, like the family is, is kind of drawn back because they don't know you. You've come into their their environment invaded their environment basically and so there's not a whole lot of bonding that grows on that first day but the second the third and that final day oh my goodness I, I didn't want to leave I was a mess I was really really a mess so the key ceremony so before the key ceremony uh, and you'll see pictures where it's kind of where all the nine families and the whole group come together and we hand the key over officially to the owners and oh my goodness yeah I was just a mess the whole day oh that's all I'm gonna say about that but uh, the family fed us this huge feast and basically it was these thin strips of beef some vegetables grilled and then we would put them on a tortilla with some homemade salsa and it was the and, and some rice and they had soft, soft drinks and stuff as well so the dad had actually come home and from work that day so missed out on wages to come and cook us this feast that there was I think they fed I think there was 15 of us in total so you can imagine what dent that put into their budget that month but they were so appreciative and we didn't want to decline it because um, it means a lot to them to be able to give back to us right so so it was therapeutic for them and it was it was therapeutic for us as well to have that final meal with the family and we got to ask through our interpreter we got to ask the family some questions and each of the kids got a turn and asked some of the kids or, or the dad the, the mom some questions and one of the questions that really stuck out for me was you know what would if we could pray for anything for you what would it be what would you want prayer for and the biggest theme from amongst all the families was we want you to pray for other families like us wow. and that to us like was very emotional because they didn't want a better life they didn't want to be moved away from the community they didn't want anything for themselves other than they did you know a couple families did say health and, and stuff for my family but it was all family orientated community orientated there was nothing selfish about these people and that just oh that struck the heart chords for sure because they they're thinking of themselves the least so this was our whole crew minus a few people that are kind of outside the picture um, and then some the families are all kind of mixed in there as well so this year was the very first year that we did a group key ceremony usually only the families we would have the ceremony where the building team and the family are on the site in front of the house and they would provide the key uh, to the family and stuff I loved the fact that we were all together because it got to because you're not visiting each other's sites you don't meet the other families so it almost seems like you're the only group there this is the only family that you're building for so I really enjoyed the fact that we all got to get together and we all got to watch each key ceremony because it just it made it so much more real so you can see some of the some of the families all kind of mixed in here which again was was very very good it created a sense of community amongst the people and and us this was our family uh, waiting this was a local pastor uh, that spoke and this was our interpreter interpreter Sam who had come along with us and he really had a particularly hard time interpreting the first couple days because he's from Guatemala so he said for him it's not I, I'm not interpreting just a language I'm interpreting a life a lifestyle that I left behind so it was very emotional for him to 
listen to the heartache, the pain, the the um, the despair of the people, knowing that he once was them. And so it was very emotional for him. Uh, it was his first trip down as well. His kids had gone before, but it was his first trip. So this pastor actually was interpreting, uh, he was kind of giving a little speech to the group and to the families about what Amor does and um, what our purpose there was and all that kind of stuff. So, so he was just uh, addressing the group. This was our local pastor from here in Calgary, and uh, so this was him sharing with the families basically why we had come and and the fact that um, you know we've been coming for 18 years and it's something that is on our hearts to do and that we will continue to do it basically. Um, so each of our groups got to go up. Um, we had one person assigned to actually do the handing over of the key and to do a little uh, ceremony or a little speech for the family and then the interpreter would interpret to the family so that they knew what we were saying. And man, it, like I said, I was a mess. I just didn't uh, I just I didn't want to leave. I wanted to leave, but I didn't want to leave and I I definitely didn't want to leave without them uh, and knowing that we can't communicate with them ever again that was the hardest thing for me even though we took Facebook things but yeah, that last night at campfire uh, they knew that some of us had exchanged Facebook's and they warned us against um, communicating with them um, not right. because, what was that I said all right yeah said, and not because they don't want us to communicate with them. It's almost like we're going in there and the biggest thing that when we go in there with the wealth that we have, with the knowledge that we have and the way that we live, our biggest tendency is to go in there and want to try to change them. This is how we do it in Canada. This is how, you know, this is this is the way that you could do things differently and it almost becomes a dependency on them they start relying on us as opposed to holding fast to their own culture if that makes any sense so there's been times in the past the first few years that they went that there was a communication and eventually emails would come saying you know I'm trying to go to school and I can't and you know do you have money for me? Like it becomes almost like a dependent, a codependent relationship. And they don't want that. They want them to maintain their own, um, their own independence. Evolution. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that was hard for me. It was hard to know that hopefully maybe next year I'll, I'll go by their house and, and, and I'll go in and say hi. But as far as communicating with them, we're not allowed, which was terrible. That, that was heartbreaking for me. Yeah. Uh, this was another one of the families. Um, this lady was so thankful. She just kept on saying, I love you all. I love you all. And of course, this was all through the interpreter, but her daughter it wants to be a doctor. And um, yeah, just a, a beautiful, beautiful heart in this woman. And she was so grateful uh, for the house that we built for her. And you can just see the joy. She was just mm -hmm. tearful. This was a single father. Uh, and, you know, again, like the joy that they had and the bonds that were created within that family was just crazy. And uh, this lady as well, she actually wrote a letter and the interpreter wrote, read it. And this lady said, and I don't know everybody who's watching this, I don't know what your spiritual level is, and I, and I, you know, I hope this isn't going to offend anybody, but you know, she basically, this letter was depicting on the third day that they were that her build team was there they had left for the day and she said I don't know or I don't know what it was and I don't know where he was standing but at 603 God was beside me and you guys 
left behind the Holy Spirit in my house. Like that, so uh, I'm going to actually be brought to tears right now, so I'm going yeah, to try not to, but just the joy that you actually give to these people are is something that you can't get anywhere else. Just knowing that you've changed lives. Um, this was another one of the families. This was one of the families that my daughter was building for. Um, after the key ceremony, so after everybody was done, we had a chance to pray as a group for these families. And so these are just some pictures of, of us praying for for the families. And it was such a such a beautiful time. Mm. So uh, this one's the bonds of love, and, and again, just to show you, like, it doesn't matter whether you speak the same language, it doesn't matter whether I'm from Canada, you're from Cambodia, you're from Africa, from anywhere, you know, those bonds of love, you can't stop them. They, they will happen, and there's no explanation for it other than that's what we were put on earth to do is to love one another, to meet everyone where they're at, and not judge. And, and that's the biggest lesson I want everybody to take away from, from this presentation and from my experience, is it doesn't matter where you're from, and it doesn't matter who you are. Um, you know, we're all equal, and we all deserve the, the, same, the same love that everybody else is entitled to. Now, I don't know if that makes any sense, but... Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so these guys, like, I mean, they are forever going to be in our hearts, and, uh, you know, you can't get back those those memories. And I'm so glad. I took over 1,500 pictures. Wow. So this presentation could have been a lot longer. But you can see, like, I mean, the girls are just so happy, and, you know, we're friends. We're in four days. In four days, that's the bond that, that grew. Only because we were willing to open our hearts and to treat them the same as we would want to be treated. To be loved and to be accepted for who we are and not judged. But just everybody came home changed. Our whole group. Just crazy. Fantastic. And just have a couple more slides here. Oops. And saying goodbye. This was on our last day. Like saying goodbye was so hard. Everybody was bawling. Just, it was just very, very hard. And then uh, our build team. Our build leader had started something last year, and he's going to keep doing this every year now because it was such an amazing thing uh, that he did that allows us to leave memories behind uh, of us for the family. And what he did was he took one of the saws that we actually used to build the home, and we all signed our names onto the saw. And... Uh, so it has everybody's name that was on the build team. And then he hung it over the window. And she's going to be able to look at that saw all the time and remember that, uh, remember us from that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the girls had written, God bless this house. And then one of the other little girls came and uh, wrote it in Spanish. And, uh, yeah, what a memory. I just hope she that nobody cuts themselves. I was looking at that thinking, you should have put that saw up a little higher. That's <laughs> nursing than me. <laughs> yeah. um, so my, my goal for you guys is, and the theme of this presentation is, I dare you to move. And by move, I mean move in your community. Don't, you know, become open open to help others and this is something I was so afraid um, 
and I'll, I'll keep you up to date. But I really, really want to get downtown. We have a few drop-in centers down here in Calgary. Um, we have the soup kitchen. We have uh, the local drop-in center. We have uh, hospitals that have kids that have no family coming to cuddle with them. Um, you know, there are so many needs within your community. And I want to leave you with this little saying. Chances are it will not be the heart of those you help, but yours that will be transformed. So by helping others, you're thinking that it's going to be helping somebody else. But you know what? God yeah. has a way of turning it around and using it to transform your heart, not just the ones that you are there to help. And so I hope that that shows you. And I didn't want to bore you with this presentation, but I really feel that more of us need to get out there and into our communities and get involved. And, you know, a lot of people, yes, they do have a choice in, in or they've kind of, some of their choices have led to the position that they're in, but a lot of people that's not the case. And, and our judgmental heart is tells our brain that they have a choice of whether they want to live like that or not. That's not the case. A lot of people have no choice, and we, we have to stop judging. Um, so anyway, that's my, that's my Mexico trip. And... I am so glad I was able to go, and like I said before, this is not going to be my last. Um, I'm hoping to go every single year now, and I'm actually looking at getting out there and finding other missions trips that I can get involved in, because going into network marketing and working from home, that has allowed me uh, the freedom to be able to work from anywhere and be able to get out there and do those things. So if you are working from home and have any uh, freedom time-wise, uh, money-wise, um, I, I encourage you, get out there and uh, find these opportunities because they're there. People, they're dying for volunteers. Almost every organization won't turn you back. So. Absolutely powerful. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing all this um, information, Kerry. No um, Yeah, that was very interesting. I mean, what I remember when I went to, to Cameroon, which is where my parents are from, um, was pretty much the same, same story, you know, same environment, and you've got rats, and you've got, I mean, life is hard there. But because people is what they is what they have, they, they are not familiar with with anything else. It's um, obviously people are happy. People are people. People are being created by God. They are happy to be with one another, and it shows that their material circumstances uh, is making everything difficult. But um, it it is absolutely powerful when you are able to go out, go out of your way and help somebody else because as you said you are not only helping them it is definitely changing you inside out and uh, then you want to do more and I would simply say go out and preach the word and, and help more people so yes that is powerful indeed yeah it was it was very moving the whole presentation everything you were you were sharing and um, yeah, thank you very much. Well, thank you all for watching. I like I said, I, I took fifteen hundred pictures plus. So the presentation, like I mean, if anyone wants to look at some more pictures or whatever, you can always contact me, and I can uh, hook you up with another presentation. But just amazing uh, experience, and and I sure hope to hear some more of your stories out there, uh, any experiences that you've had in the past or things that have come, are coming up for you. We would love to hear about them. Absolutely. So tell me again, how many were you there? We were 153, I think, altogether, including our uh, crew for driving, like our cube van drivers and our truck and trailer drivers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we built nine houses. So there was nine work crews. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So how many people per houses was that then? Was it like about maybe 
I would say maybe 12 to 15 people per house. So you typically have one house build team lead and then you have a team or a build assistant so somebody who's kind of second in command and then you have a youth leader on site so that if any problems arise with the youth or whatever he can be there to kind of help guide them um, and then there's the kids so there was probably an average of about seven or eight kids per build site Right, and that was then to be able to um, to build each house in three to four days. Yeah, in yeah, the first day was the cement pad. Second day was the walls. Uh, la uh, third day is the roof in the stucco, and the last day is that final coat of stucco. So yeah, very very quick. And long Absolutely. days, it's long long hard working days. Uh, the kids get back to camp and they're quite exhausted, but uh, but they go. They you know you drive up to the house the next day and you see what you did the day before. And most of the days the kids are like, we built a house. Like look at look, it's it's a house. They're so amazed with the progress that they see every single day coming onto the site, which was very encouraging for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is life changing. I mean, how different is that than you know? just playing games or watching TV or you know driving your bike obviously all those things are good and they are for kids but being able to help somebody else another human being and do something constructive and just having a house a roof above their head mm -hmm. and you know just different style of accommodation it's mm -hmm. giving them hope that they, they can have a new life and that they can start something new and they are people around them who are willing to help them out. So exactly, yeah. and, and a lot of well, these kids. It was their March break, so their longest. Well, besides Christmas break, I guess it's their longest holiday during school. And yet, a lot of them chose to go down and and work for their holiday. And you know, I, I can't say that it was all work. Like we did have a few things. We had a day off, so you got to choose between Disneyland and Santa Monica. So we were actually in California when the earthquake hit. So it was quite, I was laying on the floor because my feet were so swollen and I was laying on the floor with my feet up and I could feel the, the earth moving underneath me and I was like, can you guys feel that? And some of the wow. people that were standing up couldn't feel it, but then the lights were swaying overhead and stuff and, they were, and then we found out the next morning that it was an earthquake. But yeah, it was quite a, it was exciting. Sure. <laughs> what a dream. <laughs> Yes, we were an hour away from the epicenter of the earthquake, so it was just, it was very mild for us, so I might not have been so enthusiastic about it uh, or excited about the experience if I was right there and, and it was a little bit more scary, but we were safe. Absolutely. Well, thank you one more time, and um, yes, you know, if you are watching this, uh, this Hangout and you want to share with us as well something that you did outside of network marketing to help your community around you, you know, keep us posted and we will be more than happy to have you as a guest for you to share your beautiful story with the world. So thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. But my baby, they're sleeping. I need to put in bed. All right. Uh, did you want me to pull up the other sheet? Or? Yeah, yeah. If you do that, I couldn't find mine, so that would be awesome. Perfect. Just going to screen share again here, guys. And if you are interested in what exactly we do, other than going to Mexico, hmm? um, you can hook up with us on the Mastermind Fever group on Facebook and we do have some bonuses uh, for joining us in MLSP that's kind of the system that we use to build our business um, amazing an amazing tool an amazing um, community an amazing affiliate opportunity it's not an MLM it's not a business per se it is a tool to help you build your business 
um, any business that you're in. So if you are interested in learning more about MLSP, you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash MLSP Olika, so A-U-L-Y-C-A, -A, and you can uh, get some more information about that. If you happen to join our team through that link, there are some bonuses that are, oh, and look, Lydia, or Aurora, I didn't uh, fix that yet. Um, but we have some bonuses available for you. Uh, the first one is Social Lead Freak, and the value for this is $97. And basically, this is going to be a tool that is going to get you unlimited leads. There are over 5 billion people I think on Facebook, I can't remember the exact thing, but um, this tool kind of helps you find leads through Facebook and it's an, actual, it's an absolutely amazing, amazing tool. I use it myself quite frequently. Uh, the second bonus is one-on-one -on -one VIP coaching sessions, and that's going to be with the three of us, Lydia Brown, Aurora Jones, and myself, Carrie Wilson, and it can be either one-on-one -on -one or three-on-one, two-on-one, whatever, whatever you choose. It's available for you. Uh, bonus number three is a free Word plus WordPress blog and yearly hosting, and a blog is awesome because it is a, the hub of your business. It's somewhere uh, that you can have people come to learn more about you, and more about what you do, and it's a huge, huge value. Uh, there's a little inside bonus there, uh, the free InstaBuilder WordPress plugin, uh, and that's going to help you create capture pages for your business. Uh, the fourth one is a private mastermind inner circle group. We do have some bonuses, which some of them are um, our top industry leader webinars that we've hosted. We've kind of held those back. Uh, people are offered them for free at the time that the um, event or the webinar is being held, but after that they go into our, our secret vault uh, for our VIP members. Uh, number five is free VIP Hangouts, and again, I always get those two all mixed up there. Um, but basically, we have leaders like Kate um, Mache, we have Jessica Higdon, we have Rob Four, uh, Lisa Grossman, and others that you will have access to that hangout, which is huge, huge, huge value. So again, it is tinyurl.com forward slash MLSP Oleka if you would like to join us. We would love to have you. Evie, absolutely. Yes. If you want to join us, we'll be more than happy to work with you and to show you how to get leads online. And actually, this is something I wanted to say again. Uh, I've seen many people now trying to find like a quick and easy fix to get leads online and after having some people commenting about it I just realized how MLSP is powerful because by the time you start generating leads for your blog or through your videos people already know you whereas if you had like thousands of emails well you will still need to sort them out and you still need to reach out to those people to see who is who? So by finding them on Facebook and if they are not replying back to their email, that's a whole story. So just to say how powerful MLSP is and if you are really serious about getting leads online, you must jump in. Mm-hmm. I agreed. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and hearing all about my experience. And we look forward to meeting with you guys next Monday. Hopefully, Lydia will be back with us. Um, she had prior engagements that she couldn't meet with us today. So we're looking forward to having her back with us. So uh, for Aurora and I, we thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, everyone, and good evening. Take care. Oh, yes. Remember to join us in the Mastermind Fever group. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.